Let's bring in Carl Kupchan of the uh, Council on Foreign Relations uh, to continue our conversation. It appears, um, um, Richard, that, uh, that Russia is beginning to get substantial control across the east and the south, including vital sea access uh, to the Sea of Azor and the Black Sea. Is that what you're hearing? And what does that mean uh, as they go in and really decimate cities like Mariupol and Kherson? Well, you're, you're right, Tyler, that we're looking at a pincer movement, Russia coming from the north and heading toward Kyiv already, seemingly having surrounded Kharkiv, coming in from the south, the Crimean Peninsula, which they grabbed back in 2014, going after Mariupol and trying to also get uh, other areas that border on uh, the Sea of Azov or uh, on, the, on the Black Sea. And so they seem to be closing in to cut off eastern Ukraine. I think we have to take Putin at his value, he, so, the value of his words. He sort of has this image of this part of Ukraine being part of Russia. Uh, I don't think that diplomacy is going to convince him to, to, to put down arms or go for a ceasefire. So unfortunately, I think the violence is going to continue. The humanitarian uh, crisis will deepen. One big question that remains out there is how far west is Putin going to go? Will he try to go all the way to the border with Poland? And as you just talked about with Richard, that gets dangerous because then you're looking at potential conflict between Russian forces and NATO forces along NATO's eastern flank. Mm -hmm. And Charles, a lot of the commentary has already jumped ahead to say, well, you know, do let me summarize it as do the Polish want to fight in Ukraine or wait until Russia's in Poland? Is that making too much of it? You know, I, I think that that is making too much of it. The, the likelihood of spillover into NATO territory remains low. Um, my sense is that when Putin talked about nuclear weapons a few days ago, it was mostly bluster. I haven't heard any talk that we're seeing him take actions to move ballistic submarines into the North Atlantic or to take other worrying actions. I'm also hearing that some talks have begun between the Pentagon and the Russian military to create some kind of deconfliction mechanism. This is a, 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 a way of avoiding conflict between NATO forces and Russian forces. It's something that was implemented in Syria, where you have US forces and Russian forces in clo close proximity. So I don't think right now that we're looking at a high risk of spillover, but as you talked about with Richard, if Stinger missiles, if Javelin anti-tank missiles are coming in to Ukraine, they are being used against Russian forces, that may prompt Putin to say, well, I'm going to hit those convoys before they get into Ukraine. Right. That is a war with NATO. Yes, that would be, a, that to me, uh, I, I think you're exactly right on that. If, if those uh, supply lines that are coming in covertly, we would suspect, uh, are, are struck, that, that really changes the entire um, uh, nature of the conversation. So much more to talk about. Uh, and I hope, um, uh, Charles, that we will have you back to talk more.